Good afternoon, book two. Cal here from Really Good and Kind, and today we are going to be talking about one of my pet peeves, lazy criticism. Now, uh, with the invention of the internet and uh, the uh, rapid transfer of information and media, uh, everyone, and I do mean everyone, is now um, able to give their uh, in opinion on any piece of art, whether it be a video game, a song, a movie, a radio show, a podcast, what have you. <clears throat> and a lot of the things that I see um, online, and especially in online discourse, is uh, lazy criticism. And what I mean by that is uh, with the uh, rapid uh, gain in popularity of uh, media critical channels, and by that I mean like, um, you know, your uh, YouTubers who talk about movies, or your YouTubers who talk about books, or um, your podcasts that are pop culture and pop culture and entertainment related, uh, we now have a plethora of um, online content to consume about the entertainment and media we already consume. And uh, in that, then you, of course, you have comment sections where people talk about the things that people are already talking about. So this is going to be kind of a meta-on-meta -meta discussion here about the subject of criticism. Um, my least favorite thing to see is, I didn't like it. And that's it. Uh, with no justification or even explanation given. I'm not saying that you have to, but um, just, I didn't like it is not actual criticism. That's, uh, those are feelings. That's a, it's not really so much as an informed opinion as uh, one would believe. So if someone doesn't like something and they just didn't like it and they can't articulate why, it's, they don't have to. I'm not saying that they should have to. Uh, but it would be helpful for other people to see what they had a problem with. Uh, and just, I didn't like it, doesn't, doesn't tell me anything about it. Uh, so, that's lazy. Uh, I like that uh, a lot of uh, channels and things, they will actually go into in depth on what they didn't like, and not just, I didn't like it. Uh, or um, Then, of course, I see the frequent use of buzzwords that uh, other people have heard uh, content creators use as their excuse. Ah, uh, this was a plot contrivance. Okay, well, what about the plot was actually contrived to you? I'm not saying that it's not. I would just like to know what you found to be contrived about said plot. Um, oh, it was, uh, it was too convenient, or uh, it felt forced, or uh, this was rushed. What about it? Give me examples. That's all I'm asking. Uh, and that kind of closes off how I feel about this particular thing. Now we are going to get to my personal pet peeve with lazy criticism. <clears throat> so we, uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, four examples. The Last of Us 2, Malazan Book of the Fallen, Wheel of Time, and Lolita by Nabokov. So, <clears throat> Last of Us 2, of course, being a, the sequel to a very popular Naughty Dog franchise uh, that was started off with The Last of Us 1 in 2011-ish, and a sequel that was released earlier this year, which had um, mixed reception, I would say. Uh, the Mount Zan Book of the Fallen, which of course was completed in 2011-2012-ish, uh, and uh, some of the plot lines that I've seen criticized without any meaningful discussion behind the criticism, and Wheel of Time uh, in a similar way. We we'll also maybe touch on the Carcanus or Carcanus trilogy, um, or a, just to illustrate a point later on. Also, Lolita by Nabokov is, is going to be the um, central sort of focus for um, why I find this next criticism to be particularly lazy. So, what, um, what I see is uh, somebody will be reading a book, even a book that they really like, and then it'll touch on a sensitive subject. Um, this subject could be, uh, trigger warning, sexual assault, 
um, you know, murder, child murder, things like that. And uh, then the in-world response to whatever those may be. Um, and so uh, first off, let's take as an example, uh, Midnight Tides. And this isn't a shot at 10 very good books. I'm not angry with them. I'm, I'm just trying to articulate why I find uh, this particular line of thinking to be detrimental to the actual discussion of the material. Um, not that there are bad people or anything. I, I, as I've said many times before, I'm, I'm wrong a lot and I will be wrong in the future and it's okay to be wrong about something as long as you're willing to learn from it. So uh, what, what I see in, in particular is we're going to take the uh, storyline or plot point from Midnight Tides where Ublala Pung, a uh, half Tarthanol, read Toblakai, um, man um, who has a giant Johnson, a big old swinging Dr. Manhattan, a big as a dickus, if you will, uh, is in a sexual relationship with three women who are only really uh, in the sexual relationship for what he brings to the table, and that's a big old eggplant. So he is upset that there's no seem to be any meaningful connection in the relationship. It seems to be just about sex. Now, I mean, there's a, a slew of movements about sex positivity and how um, sex for sex's sake is still okay. And I agree with that. It's not something I disagree with. As long as you have partners who are playing in the same game you are. Um, anyone who thinks they might be in for something more and are giving them that special place of themselves away to someone else and are participating in that with them without reciprocation is not fun. It's not good. Uh, for both parties in the long run. Um, that's not to say you can't do whatever you want, but there are, um, you know, repercussions to things like that. And in this storyline, um, Ublala Pung is with Tehal Bidik on his roof, 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 whatever, and they are, um, he's sad. Uh, and Tehal's trying to find out why he is sad. And he asks him, you know, hey, what's, what, what, so they don't want to cuddle afterwards? And he says, yes. And he's like, I don't see what the problem is. You're living every man's dream. And it's kind of turned into a bit of a joke. Uh, the way it's delivered is actually sharply funny and witty. Um, the play, the counterplay between Ubala's point of view, Tehel's point of view, and then a little bit later on, Shergalal's point of view all come together to make a, a, a really nice cocktail of hilarity. Um, not everyone will find this to be funny. Um, not everyone will enjoy that. And what I end up seeing is, oh, well, this should not have been included. So then I ask, as you would, why? Why shouldn't have this been included? Should not this have? Yeah, fuck it. You know what I'm saying. Uh, why? Why shouldn't? It, why should it not be there? And the response I see most of all, of all any other responses uh, other than I didn't like it, which is again, it's not criticism. Um, is it's not presented critically. It's presented uncritically. What? Is it the book's job to present an idea you find personally distasteful with enough of an asterisk beside it so that you know it's not okay? No, it's not the book's job to do that. And using as an example, we are going to be talking about Lolita here for just a minute. If anyone is unfamiliar with Lolita, it's the story of a pedophile who marries a woman so that he can have a relationship with her 13-year-old daughter. Gross. Not good. And I really shouldn't have to say that. Just mentioning the plot should be enough for uh, most sane people to go, Oh, that sounds skeevy and gross. Spoilers, it is. And that's the entire point of the book. It's presented from his point of view. Oh, yeah, she's flirting with me, and she must love me. 
Uh, so I gotta get drug her and lock her in a hotel room. <clears throat> Not the right response. Bad. But the book itself, especially being told from this person's point of view, doesn't stop in the middle to have a repudiation of the thoughts and actions that are taking place on the page. Nabokov is not a pedophile, at least to my knowledge. If anyone has any uh, evidence that I don't, that he was, then I would love to see it. But you risk the integrity of the art by having to stop and have a Deadpool-style uh, wink at the camera or wink at the audience to say, you do know this is bad, right? To any person uh, who reads the material, they sh or especially if they've sought out the material and know what they're in for, um, they should be able to see objectively that what is happening is not okay. And that's the entire point of the book, is that people like this exist, they still exist to this day, and they're excellent manipulators and excellent at lying to themselves to think that what they're doing is actually okay. It is not the book's job, therefore, to have to explain this to the reader. The reader should be able to read that, see how fucking gross it is, and move on. And, and take the material for what it is, not for what they think it should be. So in the context of Midnight Tides, I've, I've had a lot of people, oh, well, that wasn't funny, uh, that wasn't good, because it's not presented critically. <sighs> not criticism. Uh, so why does this particular thing irk me is because it's used by a lot of people um, or at least i see on the internet to be able to write off and completely ignore the point of whatever the media is trying to get across um, let's take the last of us 2 for example spoilers for the last of us 2 and the last of us 2 you play as ellie and abby Ellie being the girl from, uh, the small girl from the first game who has grown up a little bit now and is now on a mission of revenge uh, to get back at the people who took Joel from her. And uh, across your rampage through this game, uh, whenever you're killing NPCs, they call each other by their name, uh, they get angry, they, they look sad. Just by playing the game, you should be able to see um, that the the commentary the the game is actually trying to make uh, and then of course by the end of the game um, after you've played for Ab as Abby for a while and you you're not really getting a rel you're getting a bit of a relativistic look at the two points of view which are actually very close to being the same point of view uh, that when these two things these two characters meet in their climactic battle it's sad it's tragic uh, it's terrible. It's it's depressing, and that's the point. Is that none of the things that are happening are good, and as the player, you're kind of given a meta commentary on the shooter genre, stealth murder genre in general. Uh, in that you know, yeah, you sure these things may be fun to do in a video game, but in real life, they're not the actions of a healthy person. And the game doesn't have to do anything else but be itself for you to figure that out. Just like with uh, uh, Nabokov, uh, his book Lolita, you can look at the, uh, the words on the page. And the words on the page are enough of a repudiation of the act itself for the reader to take away what the actual message is. So, why, why does this irk me uh, so much? Uh, because I think when people read stuff and then they miss the point and they, not that they get offended, but they, they, they feel like whatever just happened was so incredibly gross that it needs to be repudiated within the book itself. That's part of what a book can do. Um, see the series, um, the Chronicles of Thomas Covenant, the Unbeliever, for a really good, uh, dissertation on this entire subject it's by Stephen R. Donaldson. Um, he's one of the major influences upon Malazan, Book of the Fallen, and it's a, it's a Dust of Dreams is dedicated to him. He's a brilliant author and a brilliant man, 
and he writes a scummy anti-hero um, who you're not really supposed to like. That's kind of half the point. And then the way he is then treated throughout the rest of the narrative, because he's a super special sad boy, um, people can't bring justice and, or won't bring justice. They abstain from what they feel is right, uh, given the context of the situation, because he is who he is. And that is enough of a repudiation on privilege and uh, hierarchy that you don't really need the book to pound that down anymore. So going back to the example from Midnight Tides, uh, it's played humorously. Uh, you should be able to laugh at anything. Um, the reason that you're laughing can be different from what the intent behind the action is, um, because, you know, sexual assault's not funny. The mindset that allows that to take place is completely risible and deserves to be mocked. Just bringing attention to the subject should be enough for people to read it and inform their own opinion about what happened. It is not, it is not the book's job to repudiate bad actions. It's the job of the reader to repudiate bad actions. Um, it is not uh, an endorsement of behavior to include it in a uh, form of media. Uh, it, is, it is not an endorsement at all. Um, and uh, the, what I think I see is that people will read something or watch something or listen to something, and then they'll take the fact that it was included as an endorsement. And when you generally, the fact that it's being included in the first place is the exact opposite. Uh, and then the, I get to hear the old tried and true, well, it wasn't presented critically, or it was presented uncritically. <clears throat> Drives me nuts. Um, that's not to say that some authors who will write something and you can tell it's a bit of an endorsement of it. Um, see uh, Terry Goodkind's Oh, shit, I said his name. His Wizard's First Rule book series, in, in which um, sexual torture and uh, bondage type themes are explored, not to mention the bits of Randian philosophy that are uh, quite in depthly explored and outright plagiarized uh, later on. So, and especially knowing the uh, author's real life. Uh, philosophies and motivations, that this stuff can come off as, as very scummy. Um, see House of Cards and Kevin Spacey's performance, now knowing what Kevin Spacey has been uh, accused of, and oh wow, all of his accusers died, who would have thought? Uh, and his performance in these things, it makes it much, much less grit. It's not, it's scummy and it looks gross. Um, the fact that, the, you know, this person was playing that role and that role is sort of supposed to be a repudiation of people who act like that in the first place is incredibly ironic. And I, I, it's an entirely different can of worms. That's not to say that some authors won't write something and it will look like an endorsement because it's deep down possibly an endorsement. That's a completely different conversation. When I, um, but then again, it's not up to the author to reinforce those belief systems or anything else outside of the work. It is the reader's, uh, part of the purpose of uh, deconstructing the material is to figure out, okay, why is this thing gross? Or uh, uh, what, what about it does not line up with my morals? Um, would this be acceptable in the real world? Uh, or does this sort of thing already happen in the real world and I do nothing about it? Those are the questions that are important to ask. Similarly, um, with a uh, storyline and spoilers for The Wheel of Time, Book 7, A Crown of Swords, um, one of the main characters, uh, Matram Cawthon, is held at hostage at knife point, tied to a bed, and raped. I can't read that any other way. And then character's reaction to that experience is... A repudiation of how male sexual assault is viewed in the real world commonly. Um, it gets written off by a joke as a joke or as something to laugh at by not only uh, people who view the situation, like uh, take 
uh, female teachers who abuse their students. Uh, you know, he was so lucky. He wasn't. He now has to deal with that for the rest of his life. Uh, but the victims themselves, they can write these sorts of things off internally as a coping mechanism to get over or at least shunt away uh, the terrible thing that they should never have had to go through. Uh, and again, uh, the thing that I see about that is, oh, well, why would he even include that in the first place? That's gross. That's the point. Um, I, uh, so so uh, now we're going to take a quick look at the first book of the Karkanas Trilogy, or Karkanas Trilogy. Uh, there's a, a quote there at the very beginning where Arathon, uh, son of Draconis, is getting his introduction. And you find out he bites his fingernails down to nubs. It's an unhealthy habit. It's kind of gross. But the text just presents it to you. Other characters inside the text view it as a weakness within him. Do they need someone to stop the entire narrative and say, biting your nails is not good for your fingers? And it looks gross. No. No, it doesn't. It's perfectly obvious. So, this book uh, this been, has been a bit of a ramble, uh, but this is just something that I've seen all over the place, and it actually really irks me. If um, you, uh, That's not to say that if you find something to be distasteful, um, you can't not tell people about it. You should tell people about it, but you should be able to bring reasons and and um, especially examples from inside whatever it is that you happen to be uh, criticizing to the forefront um, because it, it furthers the discussion and it will help you realize uh, you need to you know, it'll help people realize exactly what it is that they they find to be quite so off about whatever it is they've just consumed, be it be a book, a movie, a song, what have you. Um, I think the more people who want to get deep into the nitty gritty of these sorts of things and discuss them, the better. And that's a great thing that the internet is for. Um, but you know, forums and comment sections seem to go through the same cycle of arguments all the time. Um, because a book or a song or a movie didn't include the, you do know this is bad, right? Asterisk in whatever it happened to be presenting. So, uh, go forth and conquer. Uh, thanks for watching. Um, if you, uh, if you disagree with me, please, uh, give me some examples down below. I would love to continue this conversation. Um, please let me know why. Um, bring reasons, uh, so I can learn something, especially if I'm wrong, and I'll be wrong in the future. Um, I hope you're having a good day. Uh, take care of yourselves, mask up, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Terry, fuck. Hi, everybody. Terry, good guy here to tell you why that quick that guy just was saying is bullshit. Okay, first of all, Randy and philosophy is great, uh, and everyone should subscribe to. Uh, being an island in and of themselves and try to exploit as many of the people around them for their labor as possible. Uh, secondly, um, SNM is cool. Trying to kink shame me over here? What a dick. Uh, also, also, just because I included something nasty or uh, uncomfortable in one of my books doesn't mean that. Uh, I should have to explicitly tell the person that what they're reading is wrong. That's up to them and their own morality to be able to figure that out. Secondly, uh, if you do need Asterix to tell you that things are wrong, you probably need help chewing your own food. Ha 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 